Oh dear, don't build me up too much because uh, this isn't going to be nearly as good as what you've just heard. But um, I do know a bit about Ada Lovelace, so uh, I'm going to uh, start off by some points that Helen actually touched upon. Um, you might be thinking, why is that girl that did children's TV for a while giving a talk at the Royal Institution? Well, I do believe, and as I said, Helen touched upon it, that Ada Lovelace is kind of like the embodiment of combining the arts and creativity with science and technology. I mean, she is by design the product of Lord Byron, a poet, a very prolific one. He was also known to be a very vivacious character, a womanizer, quite wild. And then his wife, Lady Isabella Byron, was a fantastic mathematical mind. And so together, they made this little zygote, which then flourished into Ada Lovelace. And I do believe that the very person she is um, has a bit of an affinity with me. Now, let me tell you a bit about me. Not that I can do anything like uh, work out that a computer has capabilities beyond just the numerical and number crunching, which is what she did. But um, I grew up in, as a British Bangladeshi in the UK um, in an Asian family that quite would have liked me to be an accountant or a scientist or a doctor. It's a bit of that stereotype. And so as I was growing up, I was very much pushed towards sciences and mathematics, cut back to Ada Lovelace. Um, Ada's mother, after breaking up with Byron, um, he kind of got bored of that marriage after a year and went off. And so she just like, yeah, he was a womanizer. He was really, really not a very good um, role model for her little girl, Ada. Um, she decided to ban Ada from seeing Byron. And not only that, she decided the way to stop Ada becoming a wild child and going off the rails like her father was to immerse her in mathematics and science and bring her up in a very strict educational regime. Cut back to me. No, my parents weren't, weren't that bad at all. But um, I really did love numbers and science growing up. And then you get to the age of about 14, or you have to make, is it 14 that you make your GCSE choices? Something like that, quite young anyway. I'm getting on so much that I, I can't actually remember how old I was back then. And um, at that point, I was like, yes, I'm going to be a doctor. That's what I'm going to do. So I chose physics, chemistry, and biology and kept all the science things in my options. And then, and then it got to A-levels. And I thought, oh, I'm not really that into biology. Um, but I'll be an engineer. So then I chose maths, further maths, physics, and chemistry. But all the time growing up and during school, I loved drama. I loved public speaking. I did my Guildhall grades. And I was sort of like in those Tom and Jerry cartoons where there's like an angel and a devil. And I don't know which is which. Probably they're both angels. The arts angel and, and, and the science angel. And I was just like torn. Which should I do? Um, and then, basically, I read an advert in Time Out magazine, um, which was looking for TV presenters, open auditions for TV presenters. So I went along and I lied, and I pretended I'd left school, even though I looked about 12, I still look about 12 now, uh, and that I was ready to take on this job as a TV presenter, because I thought I'd never get anywhere. It's just a way to meet boys at these open auditions. And um, basically, I kept getting called back and called back, and then before I knew it, I'd got this job as a TV presenter. It's like, right, when can you start? And I, and I was like, uh-oh, I have to tell them that actually I'm in full-time education at school. <laughs> Cut back to the beauty of mathematics and engineering and the sciences, as it was in those days. I don't know if it's still the case. If you're doing maths and further maths, you did your maths A-level a year early, which meant I had already got maths A-level under my belt, and I could drop the further maths and have lots of free periods to do TV presenting. <laughs> Woohoo! And even better still, um, they couldn't choose between me and another girl for this role of TV. TV presenter. I can't see why. I mean, I'm the obvious choice. But so I actually ended up job sharing with, I don't know, some of you might know Gia Milenovic. She, she has done a talk at this very here Ada Lovelace Day in a previous year, and she's also a very cool, sciencey, techie woman. Not saying I am cool like Ada Lovelace is cool, sciencey, techie woman. But anyway, so 
I managed to do that, but what was brilliant was that on my UCA form, suddenly I had this science background and then this TV presenting hobby on the side, which meant that universities that would never touch me with a barge pole before thought I was like cool and really interesting. So I got into my first choice university, so I look at it as a mutual symbiosis, and throughout my life, I believe the arts side of things have helped the science side of things, and vice versa. I mean, even getting my job on Blue Peter, they were really impressed when they got the, you know, the covering letter and the stuff that I wrote, saying, please, please, I'd be good on telly on your show. They were really impressed at the fact that I've got maths and science-y credentials and a bit of an education. And so I like to think the two things helped each other. Um, now cut back to Ada. So Ada, you all know, um, or you may not know, I shouldn't assume knowledge, should I? But Ada basically worked with Charles Babbage on the computer, and Charles is always credited as being the father of computing. But in a way, Ada's role is kind of much bigger in many ways when you look at computers as we have them today. Helen sort of touched on it, but Ada saw the capabilities that computers had beyond just number crunching and being glorified calculators. She was the first lady to be able to program a computer, but she also saw the scope that computers have to incorporate the arts and creativity. And so today, when I watch my two-year-old drawing a picture on the iPad, I can look at him and think, that's thanks to Ada, that is. And, you know, music and many other creative things are all enabled with the help of computers in today's society to mean that we can extend the breadth of what we can do and the depth of what we can create. And, and that's all thanks to the foresight that Ada had. Um, in fact, Babbage, back in the day, didn't even understand himself what the computer could, could be capable of, and, and, and he was quite perplexed by some of the notions that Ada had. And then, after World War, when Turing carried on um, with the computer as we have today, he actually looked at Ada's notes, and, and, and they helped him give us the product we have today. And computers have come on such a long way in my lifetime. I mean, I, I look a lot younger than I am, but when, when I was growing up, many of you won't even remember this, but you'd get a computer, you might get a ZX Spectrum or a ZX81 and uh, a Commodore 64, and you'd go 10, print, Connie, 20, go to 10, 30, run, and the screen filled up, Connie, 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 and you went, I've programmed a computer. You know, my child, who's only two, can do things much better than that on the iPad, and, you know, he's only two. And, and, and you know, I was so proud of myself back then. And they've come on such a long way. And I remember my mother used to ask me back in the day as well, you know, can you program the video to tape this for me? Can you program the video to tape that for me? And I used to think, Mum, you can't even work out how to use a video recorder. You're so stupid. But yet my nephews come around now and they're building whole worlds on Minecraft and they're communicating with people via the PlayStation and doing all sorts of things. And I look at myself and I think, I am my mother now. I just have no idea. And, and you know, a lot of this is all thanks to Ada. Um, so I'm going to end with... Th this, is, right, this is a rap, originally, that was written. I saw on the thing that you've got, it says that I'm going to do a rap now, and I'm not, so I don't, don't want to excite you. I'm not going to humiliate myself in, in that way. But um, I'm going to recite a poem about technology. Now, it was originally written as a rap, so any of you that know rap songs will notice it's got a lot of references to existing rap music. So anyone that's thinking, that's a bit of a weird lyric that's in there, just that's why, but you can go and look up the references on Google. Computers are great, aren't they? Uh, later. And I have to say as well, it was written um, for a program that I did. It's got a little bit of swearing in it. I've taken out most of the swearing, but there's certain bits that it won't rhyme unless I do the swearing. So I, I feel terrible coming to the Royal Institution and swearing. And I've noticed there's some youngsters there. So I sort of sort of say it in a blurry manner, because like, I'm a Blue Peter presenter. Well, I was a Blue Peter, and I feel, te I feel terrible. But anyway, and this is a homage to Ada. And, you know, it's a rap. Well, it's a poem, rather. So, you know, that's the Byron side of things, and it's all about technology, so that's the scientific side of things. And it's sort of saying that computers are great, they're brilliant, and I love computers and technology and the, the progress that we've had in our lifetime, but also that let's keep creative as well, because we don't want them to keep doing everything till we're just people with extremely long fingers that sit there, that are fat, a bit like in wall -E. um, Okay, so here we go. I shall begin my rap slash poem. 
Um, okay. Oh gosh, I feel really nervous now I'm doing this bit. Okay. Internet and technology utilization can make your brain take a vacation. Certain skills may start to regress. It's time to confess my head is a mess. Friends and neighbors live on my street, don't need to pop round when I can tweet. Real human people, what are they for? I want Facebook friends, give me some more. So these neighbors ain't seen my face, just wiki me or check out my space. Nothing to do but oh so busy. Hectic hyperlinks making me dizzy. Hyper Link, cyberlink, oh so quick to type a link, sitting on the shit, updating my Twitter. This cyber life ain't making me fitter. Guns don't kill people, tweeters do. 140 characters can decimate you. Facebook, book, what does that mean? I don't need to read, I got a texting machine. I got a smartphone, it's smarter than me. It's got internet and syncs with PC. Time is precious, I cannot wait. It's time to do a status update. Hotmail, email, drop me a Gmail. My inbox is loaded, full to the hilt. Got a reply, I got internet guilt. Got Got to reply as fast as I can. Half of it's bullshit, half of it's spam. Brap, brap, check out my app. It makes funny noises, it's a load of crap, but it entertains my ailing brain. Sometimes I feel like I'm going insane. Insane in the membrane, insane in the brain. Out socializing, no, I'm being frugal, sitting inside, whacking on Google. Human interaction, I'm on detox, I'm too stoned, playing on my Xbox. Exercise, that ain't for me. Yo, mother huckers, I got a PSP. PS <laughs> Three and PS2, PS me and PSU. Lo-fi, hi-fi, lost without Wi-Fi. Only three bars, this stuff is killing me. Badly need signal, need my 3G. Tagging my pics, trying to get hits, not being connected gives me the shits. LOL, laugh out loud. OMG, huck this crowd. Don't need to write, don't need to spell. Predictive text serves me well. It's okay, stay off your feet. On shopping.com, you've got the high street. ASOS, eBay, online store. Packaged and delivered right to your door. We don't need no shops no more. Don't need no shops, don't need no mates. Can always find internet dates. Misanthropic, trending topic. YouTube, WikiLeaks, just can't stop it. I got 70,000 followers, it's like I'm a god. Worship on my tweets, your internet spod. Internet is the new religion. MMS, the new carrier pigeon. And that's the wrap. <laughs> And I realized that actually I loved making stuff, and I loved maths and science, and I thought, well, what can I do with that? And, and it took me a long time to work out that engineering um, is the answer, but I'm really glad that I managed to make that journey.